We are all going to be overweight by 2048. Don't believe me? Just look at this graph. It's taken from a study done in 2008 by the Department of International Health. See those four dots? That's the percentage of overweight Americans from the late 80s to the early 2000s. It's pretty clear the numbers are increasing. The line crosses the 100% mark in 2048. So that's when the authors predicted all Americans would be overweight. It caused quite a stir as newspapers warned of an obesity apocalypse. But the study had another interesting result that African American men were less likely to be overweight than the average American and only three quarters of them would be overweight by 2048. Wait, what? Didn't the study say that all Americans would be overweight by 2048? How could all Americans be overweight when only three quarters of African American males are? Well, it's simple actually. The study is wrong. We will not all be overweight by 2048. But the line, you say, it shows a clear trend. Or at least that's what you would be saying if you were any newspaper at the time. Well, guess what? Not all lines are straight. See, the study used a statistical tool called linear regression. If you've ever done a basic stats class, it was probably one of the first things you learned. It's very useful for figuring out relationships. For example, say you wanted to know the relationship between the cost of a university's tuition and its students' average SAT scores. You do some research and make a graph. It looks like this. The dots on the graph are 31 universities, along with their students' average SAT scores and cost of tuition. As you might expect, schools with higher average SAT scores cost more. Not every school fits this trend. For example, Elon University, North Carolina has a higher score than Guilford College in Greensboro, but costs less. But even still, it's pretty clear that the overall trend is that the cost of college tuition increases with SAT score. Now, maybe you want to know exactly how much more. This is where you perform a linear regression. The points on your graph obviously don't form a straight line. But if you tried to draw a line that passed closest to all of the points, it might look like this. That's what a linear regression does. It draws the line that comes closest to passing through all the points. You can actually do this accurately by clicking a single button in Microsoft Excel. This is really useful because the slope of the line tells you by how much the price increases per mark. For example, the slope here is 28. So that means with every one mark increase, college tuition goes up $28. Linear regression can measure just about any data set from as little as two variables like the one we just did to as many as a thousand. You can find meaningful relationships with the click of a button. And that's the problem. It's so easy to use that we sometimes forget whether we should use it. In his book, The Power of Mathematical Thinking, Jordan Ellenberg refers to linear regression as a table saw, an extremely useful tool when you're building a house, but dangerous if you're not paying attention. The reason is simple. Linear regression assumes all lines are straight, but they're not. Take the relationship between how much you eat and how healthy you are. Linear regression would tell us that the more you eat, the healthier you are. But common sense tells us that this is of course not true. In fact, the line should look more like this, with low scores for health at either end and the optimal place somewhere in the middle. This seems obvious, but I bet even you've used linear reasoning before where you shouldn't have. Anytime you've said that if something is good, then more of it can only be better, that's linear reasoning. Anytime you've read in a newspaper that countries with more Burger Kings are happier or that flossing your teeth makes you a better listener, that's linear reasoning. Politicians use it all the time, and so did the authors of this study when they concluded that all Americans will be overweight by 2048. They forgot that not all lines are straight. Really, it should look more like this. The logic is simple. The higher the proportion of overweight people, the fewer skinny people there are left to gain weight. So the proportion of overweight people will slow down the closer it gets to 100%. In fact, it'll probably never reach 100%. So the next time you find yourself thinking that if something makes you happy, more of it could only make you happier, just remember, not all lines are straight.
Thanks for watching guys and a huge thank you to the Vlog Brothers for sponsoring this episode of Up and Adam. This video was based on a chapter of the book um, the Power of Mathematical Thinking, How to Not Be Wrong by Jordan Ellenberg. I've linked it in the description if anybody wants to have a look at it. And yeah, that's it. Bye!